if someone you know needs downtime or time for themselves or you know uh takes a weekend off it's like this person is not motivated not driven okay now let's look for someone who's who's willing to burn <laughs> the midnight oil you need your rest you need your recovery <laughs> i remember very clearly when we you know when we met and you spoke about that moment when you know you you were overworked and there was a day when you collapsed yes what was that moment so uh, it was two years into building the Huffington Post. Um, I was the divorced mother of two little girls. And uh, I had bought Deepika into the collective delusion that in order to succeed, to be a super founder and a super mom, I didn't have the luxury to take care of myself. So literally, I, I didn't sleep a lot. I didn't exercise. I ate whatever was there. You know, I really, literally put myself last. And one morning, I was at my desk and I felt cold and I, I got up to go get a sweater and I collapsed and I hit my head on my desk and uh, broke my cheekbone. And uh, that was the beginning of a journey, first of all, to find out what was wrong with me. Right. You know, when you suddenly collapse, um, they put you through echocardiograms and MRIs to see, did I have a brain tumor? Did I have a heart defect? What happened? And I was diagnosed with burnout. And at the time, burnout was not a term that was much in use. And, and it was really something that completely changed my life because I learned through all my studies at the time that it wasn't just my problem, that it was a global epidemic, um, that people all around the world were suffering from burnout. Yeah. And I wanted to understand, Deepika, why? Why were so many people believing that that was the way to be most productive? Yeah. We have to learn that, in fact, to be most productive, you need downtime. We need to, we need that downtime. We need recovery time. You feel like for someone who actually makes time for themselves or takes a weekend off is someone who's not driven, right? Yes. Um, which I find so bizarre. Um, you know, I think when people have boundaries, when they have, um, you know, when they have a certain structure. And of course, everyone's um, output level is different, right? And, you know, maybe four hours for you is too many hours for me and maybe eight hours for someone else is, you know. So I think, of course, it, you know, it varies from individual to individual. But I think this, this, this notion and I think things have, things have started to change now to some extent yes. post-COVID and, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but... There's still this sort of, if someone, you know, needs downtime or time for themselves or, you know, uh, takes a weekend off, it's like this person is not motivated, not driven. Okay, now let's look for someone who's who's willing to burn <laughs> the midnight oil. And that person's great because they're like so hardworking and so committed and so dedicated. Whereas what you said is absolutely right. And I think for me, at least, it comes from being an athlete that, uh, you need your rest, you need your recovery. You in fact need that to be able to perform better. It's not about making a huge drastic change overnight. It's about doing, starting small. What are those little changes that you've brought about? Yes, yeah, so my absolute favorite micro step uh, was to pick a time at the end of the day that I consider the end of my working day. Because honestly, Deepika, I'm sure you and I and most people watching don't have a real end to their working day, right? We could stay up all night yes. texting and handling things. We have to declare an end. And I declare an end by turning off my phone and charging it outside my bedroom. Now, that may seem incredibly hard for people. Don't worry about it. Start with one night a week. And you know, we have a mental health crisis among young people. Yes. And part of the reason is because they sleep with their phones. 
And instead of sleeping, they tick-tock or snap or whatever. So they wake up exhausted. Correct. And therefore more likely to become anxious or depressed. I'm sure people are wondering, and I'm going to ask you this question. So say you have this switch off time and then say maybe it's 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. or something. And then you have this this thought, right? And this urge to sort of, uh, you know, like I want to, this urge to message that person or send that email out because you feel like you're going to forget that task. Forget it. Very easy. You have a little notepad. There you go. Yeah. With a pen by your bed and you write and you write down and then in the morning you act on it. But the another micro step around sleep, Deepika, is that I do every night. I have a hot bath or a hot shower before I get into bed. It's not for cleanliness. Mm. It's to begin to slow down my brain. Correct. 